Rebecca, I am so pleased that you agreed to uh, join us today and to um, to talk about your work. Uh, you, you and I first met in 2018, and um, I was amazingly impressed that you were already teaching VR development at a community college then. I know you to be a um, dedicated, passionate teacher and um, I know that you are blazing a trail for others to follow behind. So um, please, um, <laughs> please take it over from here and uh, look forward to hearing what you have to say. All right, well, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Karen. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. Uh, there we go, okay. So, uh, yes, hello everybody. Uh, I am Dr. Rebecca DuPont. I am part of Community College of Allegheny County that is located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And as a community college, uh, we are a two-year institution. And one of the big things that we often face is equity as far as um, our students are concerned. And one of the things was, okay, you know, we wanna be cutting edge. We want to be preparing our students for the jobs of tomorrow. So one of the big questions was, is how do we even begin to do this? Prior to COVID-19, uh, when we first had our shutdown, it was very much, we had an innovation lab at one of our campuses. We have four total campuses, but also two, we were in an environment whereby uh, the students were able to come in, they had access to computers that they were able to get their work done. And also too then, they were able to do paper prototyping, they were able to learn the software uh, and work with the hardware of the industry. We really had the issue of equity hit us whenever we got to COVID was, okay, now we had students that were trying to work from home, trying to complete their work, but also we had students that didn't have internet or they didn't have the computers to be able to handle that. So those were some of the things that we had to face. Another thing though, overall, from an equity standpoint that I've had to deal with uh, over the years of teaching is what exactly is needed? I don't know, you know, as far as, you know, anybody out there, you may have experienced where people really seem to focus on the space that you're creating in. And yes, the space can be important, but from an equity standpoint and being able to get started uh, teaching this type of stuff, as far as AR and VR is concerned, uh, you don't really need a lot of pretty things. You can have just, you know, standard Dells or, you know, Macs. You can just have a couple of headsets and really you're good to go. Now, another thing though, that uh, is happening right now, at least in Pittsburgh and in the Pennsylvania, uh, state of Pennsylvania, is we're starting to see a lot of questions as far as the importance of the college degree you have boot camps out there now uh you know so do i go to a boot camp or do i go to a two-year do i want to go on to a four-year these are all questions now that we are trying to face as far as how do we actually get our students prepared in two years to be able to go out and take on these positions that really i'm sure we've all had that experience in one form or another we have a lot of folks out there that we don't know what we're looking for we know that we, uh, you know, you have folks out there that they know they want this virtual reality stuff or they want this augmented reality stuff. Oh, I've heard of XR. So, you know, what? we're just going to make a very, very long list and hope something sticks and we're able to actually apply that to it. And that was one of the first things I was approached with whenever I was hired by CCAC was pretty much they had this idea for this multimedia program for multimedia communications. And the question was, how do we address all of this? Uh, what are the needs? What are the things that we will need to do? And that is something that one of the first things was, was I was provided with a space. And so that's the first thing I wanted to talk about from an equity standpoint is students having access to the same type of hardware across the board. Now, this can be provided either in an actual space on a campus. This can also be through rentable laptops. Uh, 
you know, that, that can be supplied through the library. But the biggest, trickiest part is the actual headsets themselves. How do you get headsets into the hands of students that might not be able to do so? And right now, that is something that there are schools that are grappling with that as far as are we comfortable renting out uh, headsets? There have been several universities in the Pittsburgh area whereby they include the cost of the laptop and the headset in uh, the student's tuition. All of these options are out there. We even have a manner whereby students can buy laptops through our uh, through our campus uh, bookstore that they can actually use their financial aid with that as well. So all of these elements come into play. I will say in my personal experience, one thing that I have noticed is from an equity standpoint, a lot of the students that seem to come into my discipline, they like playing video games and a video game computer can be enough to get them by as far as getting started with the software. And that's actually another area as far as, you know, providing for your students. Yes, you have all of this hardware, but let's pause a minute, take a step back. What software are you using to teach these students? At CCAC, we pretty much, I would say we do practically almost everything in the kitchen sink. We're actually getting ready to upgrade to Multimedia 4.0, where we're going to have a section for Rococo suits and you know motion capture. We're also upgrading as far as our headsets are concerned. We're also upgrading all of our hardware and redesigning our overall lab. We saw what didn't work, and now we're going back and reworking it. And we're also making it more functional as well. So, but also it's given us a chance to relook at the type of software we're offering students. And that's a big point too, that you can save your students a lot of money. There is a tug of war that, you know, from an equity standpoint for me, do I ask my students to buy the Adobe Creative Suite uh, if they are working from home? Or is there a way that we can work and provide access to the students through uh, virtual machines and things like that? Those are the types of things you have to tackle whenever you are working at making sure that your students have access to this. However, there also stands the question of with like things like, okay, if they know GIMP, would they be able to make the jump to Photoshop? Now, the other item too is getting your communities involved and that was actually a very big thing for us and you know karen mentioned as far as us meeting we were part of uh, the vrar association of pittsburgh uh, this was hosted at an event as far as a dabble and mingle to not to introduce people in the community about vr uh, what we offered at ccac and most people walked away stunned that a community college was actually offering all of these types of, you know, teaching elements to students. Again, our main focus is affordability. You know, I am a firm believer in students should have the opportunity to go, try this out, realize, hey, you know what, this isn't for me, and they're not locked into, you know, a ton of student debt. Okay, tried the class, didn't like it, or I really like this, I'm going to do my two years here and then where can I transfer to if I want to get a four year or also as well one thing that we're currently working on is apprenticeships apprenticeships at least in Pittsburgh Pennsylvania they're becoming a pretty hot topic for us and that's going back to okay what you know how important is the degree one apprenticeship we're currently working with here is we are working with Shell Games where they are going to have two apprentices come through my program at CCAC and take three years. And they are not only going to go through the program and learn the content to become uh, you know, developers, but also too, they're going to get three years of experience working at Shell Games. And when they complete the Associate of Science, they are going to have no student debt, three years of experience in the industry and have been exposed to some of the industry's most common software, including Unity, Creative Cloud, Maya, Unreal, et cetera. So, and then I just wanted to take some slides here to show you, you know, what, you know, what my students can do. You give these students the opportunity 
there's a ton that they can do. I mean, you know, the sky is the limit with them and they get so engaged and so excited that they can finally make, you know, what's in their minds a reality. So I wanted to close up here just real quick what are some things that you can do? So maybe you saw this and you know, you'd kind of been wondering about that. There are so many communities out there. And the thing was, when I first started all of this, I was kind of by myself. There was no degree in XR when I went to college. So it was literally for me, it was my chair came to me and asked me, do you like making video games? I said, yes. And next thing you know, I'm teaching people in Unity and Unreal. And that was how my entire career started there. Now that I've had, you know, over 18 years under my belt now, number one is the community. Yes, there are grants involved, but honestly, it's the community. Going out there, finding out what your community needs, helping them understand what they need. And yes, right now, at least in Pittsburgh, we are facing that hard question as far as STEM, uh, XR, and trade skills are concerned. Is the four-year degree necessary? Looking back on it, one other thing I'd like to emphasize to folks is if I could go back and do it all over again, I would have started a lot smaller. I wouldn't have done this giant lab with all of these headsets and all of these computers. I would have focused more on like Google Cardboard, um, more paper prototyping, getting maybe only picking one game engine. Uh, you know, we teach both Unity and Unreal at CCAC. If looking back on it, I would have pulled back and maybe started with Unity because then on top of that, the students are also learning things like C Sharp and C++ simultaneously. So they're getting hit pretty hard. And then lastly, uh, the last two items is knowing your audience. That's probably the biggest thing. I get so many students from so many walks of life. I've got the students that are coming right in out of high school. I've got the students that, you know, they have their four year, but they decided that they wanted to come back and shift gears. I have people who, you know, they need this for, uh, you know, their jobs and they need to come in and figure out how to do it. And then lastly, one thing um, that, you know, I did learn about today here, but also, you know, I'd emphasize we need to share with each other open education resources. I know for a lot of us, especially, you know, I can appreciate for adjunct faculty, this is your bread and butter. But on the flip side, you know, we're not going to keep moving forward and breaking down these barriers and continuing to grow, you know, in XR if we're not sharing as far as our information is concerned. So that's what I wanted to share as far as community college and you know the things that I do. And yes, uh, I have about 200 students. I have been a, as Karen knows, I've been a one woman army now for five years. I am the only teacher uh, as far as faculty member at CCAC who does this. As a, though I can actually stop saying that as of yesterday, I finally got a second faculty member hired. So I am now a department of two. So, but that's um, kind of it as far as all of, you know, the things that I do as far as approaching equity with our students. That was wonderful, Rebecca. Thank you so much. Um, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot to be learned from from what you are doing, and I'm grateful to, to you for coming on today and sharing this with us. And keep doing the good work. And uh, yeah, you know, you. yes. You know, look forward to seeing how the programs go now that you're starting to get more more teachers and more resources. So. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for having me.